Hi everyone, I am Katie, the Crafty Blog Stalker, and today I am going to show you how to make a personalized cutting board. Now these are really much simpler than you think. We're just gonna cut the stencil out using our Cricut, and then I've got this really cool wood burning marker that I can't wait to show you. If you're new to my videos and love everything crafty, subscribe and make sure to ring that bell. The supplies that we're going to use is of course a cutting board and I got this two pack off of Amazon for about $10. 220 grit sandpaper, a wood burning marker, paper towels, cutting board oil, a scrap piece of vinyl, and some transfer tape, a heat gun, and our Cricut cutting machine. We're going to start in Cricut Design Space. Now I purchased this mon split monogram file from Etsy, and then I typed in the last name, which is Waters, and then I highlighted the whole thing and welded it together. So it is one complete file. For my specific cutting board, I want my design to be five inches at the longest point. So I'm gonna click on edit and width. I have the width at five inches. So perfect, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on make it. I'm gonna cut on a mat because I'm using scrap vinyl. And there's a little preview. I'm gonna click on next. I'm gonna go to all of my materials and type in vinyl. And we are just going to say it is vinyl. Okay, and then down here it tells me exactly what I need, which is just the fine point blade. So now I can go to my Cricut machine. I'm gonna load my mat. And it's gonna measure out my vinyl to make sure that I have enough for the project. And then when this light starts to blink, it means that the machine is ready to cut. So our design is cut. So let's go ahead and trim this. And then I can use this scrap for another project. Now we are going to be using this design as a stencil, which means we want to remove the positive part of the design. So we are only left with the negative. Now to help me see my lines better, I am going to bring in my Cricut Bright Pad. I'm gonna turn that on. Now our stencil is almost all ready to go. I'm just gonna trim the bottom part a little bit. And now it's ready to go. And the first thing we want to do is to figure out which side we want that personalization on. I like to choose the best side, and to me that looks like the better side because it has less um, connection spots there. So we're gonna take some sandpaper that's 220 grit, and we just wanna go over that area that we're going to uh, burn and make sure that it is nice and smooth. And I'm also gonna go around the edges because on these cutting boards, the edges are just a little bit rough. Okay, our cutting board is nice and smooth. You can totally tell the difference between the front and the back. I'm gonna grab some transfer tape. And I want a piece of transfer tape that is about the same size as my stencil here. So we're gonna cut that out right there. Pick up that transfer tape off of the backing sheet. Now you'll notice 
that this transfer tape has little guidelines on it. Usually I don't worry too much about the guidelines, but for this project, I am going to use them. So what I'm gonna try and do is line up a guideline right along underneath the name, so underneath waters, and that is gonna help me uh, put it on straight. There we go. We got it. Now I'm gonna push hard with my scrapey tool along the front. And then I'm gonna do the same along the back. And then we're going to remove the vinyl backing paper. So our vinyl, vinyl is only stuck to the transfer tape. And now we are going to apply this to our cutting board. Now I'm an eyeballer, as you know. But if you need to measure that out so you get it perfectly straight, that is totally fine too. I'm gonna push down again with my scraper tool. And then we're going to remove the transfer tape. And as you know, wood or vinyl doesn't always like to stick to wood. So we're gonna help it by holding it down with the scraper tool. Now we're going to go around and just push all of that vinyl down. It works better with your finger than it does with the, the scraper tool. We're going to bring in our wood burning pen. Now this I found on Amazon. There are a bunch of different brands. I've used a couple different brands and I've never had one that didn't work. So go with what's cheapest or you can go with a, more of a name brand, but I find that they really work very similarly. Now the key to this is you don't want to use a lot of the ink from the wood burning marker because otherwise it will seep under the, the stencil. So I'm gonna keep a paper towel handy and I'm going to bleed out the tip of my marker as well as use this to daub. And we're just gonna start coloring. All right, so now we're done coloring, and I know it's hard to tell. You really almost can't even tell that we colored on that, but that is okay. We did. Next comes the fun part of actually burning the wood. So I've got this other cutting board that I'm gonna bring in just so I don't hurt the surface of my table here. And to burn it, we are going to use a heat gun. We're gonna turn the temperature up to about a thousand, and then we're gonna apply heat with the stencil still on. This will help it not bleed as much. Now it's gonna get really loud, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just waiting for my heat gun to heat up, and we are ready, and now I'm just gonna apply the heat. And you can see how it makes the vinyl bubble and there is the color difference there. We're just gonna do that all over. Okay, that looks really good. 
I'm gonna grab my weeding tool. While it's still warm, I'm gonna peel it back. And you can see the burn. Isn't that so cool? Now I have tried burning it and taking the stencil off before burning it and it just bleeds a lot more. So I think you get a much cleaner look if you leave the vinyl stencil on while you're burning it. All right, isn't that so cute? Oh, I love giving personalized gifts. Yay. Okay, but we aren't done yet. To completely finish the board, use some cutting board oil. And we're gonna put that all over the board. Just add a generous amount. And then with the rag or a cotton round like I have, you're just gonna press that into the wood. Now you want to let this dry for at least an hour and then you can turn it over and do the other side and I do the edges while I'm right here and you can see how that oil just really makes it pop. I'm going to set this one aside to dry and with this one I'm going to show you how I package it to give as a gift. So I've got these 9 by 12 cellophane bags. I'm going to open that up if I can. I'm going to put the cutting board inside and I turn it over and then I'm going to add some goodies. I've got some cheese. Of course, a summer sausage. And my other favorite is this knife that looks like a meat cleaver. Isn't that so cute? But it's made for meats and cheeses and I got this on Amazon as well. Love this knife. So I'm gonna put this shield, the knife shield in there so they can have it. But I'm gonna put the knife in like this so you can still see it and just be careful with it when I'm bringing it as the gift so it doesn't cut through the plastic. I'm going to turn it back over and I'm just going to fold that over onto itself. Take some clear tape. Tape that down. And then I have this super easy gift, a personalized cutting board with cheese and meat and this totally awesome knife. I hope she is going to love it. This is a great gift for a girl or for a guy. It is totally awesome. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. While you're here, subscribe so you'll never miss any of my upcoming tutorials. And of course, you can always find me at my home base at thecraftyblogstalker.com. Thanks everyone. Bye and happy crafting.